Did you know that Crowded Barrel wasn't supposed to be a public distillery? It was supposed to be a, um, a workshop distillery for Whiskey Marketing School. Um, I'm Daniel Whittington, I'm the Chancellor at Wizard Academy and Whiskey Marketing School. And I started, I have memories of how we started Crowded Barrel and some of them are very strong. And I started going back and watching old episodes and trying to research dates on, to see like how much my memory is accurate on what I remember and how much of it is like I rewrote the story in the last, you know, seven years. Um, but the origins of Crowded Barrel are pretty unique and pretty cool. Um, so when we started Whiskey Marketing School in 2015, and uh, I, at the time I thought level four and five, and there's not a five anymore, but I thought the final levels of that school program were going to be involved in production somehow and showing them how to run stills and actually get their hands on equipment. I've since changed that uh, because I think there are other programs doing that better and I would rather send our students there um, than try to replicate it. And then we could double down on what we're great at, which is communications and business and marketing, and that becomes our final wrap-up. So I mentioned this, and, and Roy, the, uh, who owns the for-profit side of the property, said, why don't we build a little tiny distillery over here, and you can use it for the whiskey marketing school. And we build it over there so that it's not tied to the nonprofit business school and we never have to worry about trying to balance like a nonprofit owning a whiskey distillery and it just creates too many complications. And I was like, sure, that's great. So we started down the process in that. At the exact same time, we were developing the whiskey vault channel was getting more and more elaborate and Rex and uh, was and I were feeling the the handcuffs of the fact that like there's a lot of things we couldn't do because it was a nonprofit channel and we had to be really careful with the nonprofit resource of the whiskey vault because it was owned by Wizard Academy. And so simultaneously two things happened. One, Rex got involved in the distillery and the distillery changed slightly from being just a resource agent that was only open when we had class to like, this is gonna be a real distillery and it'll be small and micro and weird and interesting, but we'll film it and we'll let you guys see and be a part of the story of building this small distillery. And that's when it switched from being a resource for the Psalm School to, um, all right, it's gonna be its own thing and Rex and Daniel are going to start it. And uh, that was pretty early on actually. Um, I think it was 20, 17 and 2018, we, we spent building the building. And during that time, you can go to the Tribe channel and you can watch multiple videos of like trees being cut down. And I think October 2017 was the first episode where we cut a tree down and put a plank down and said, here's what we're gonna do, guys. Um, and then the Patreon started after that. And the Patreon turned it into a crowdsourced whiskey distillery. And I'll explain that in a second. But first, let's talk about this. This is Westward. And this is a gift from Anthony Iterietta, who is a kind and generous human being. Thank you, Anthony. This is a Oregon malt, and uh, I, I just love what these guys are doing. They're using Oregon grains. They're, they're very serious about production and taking care. Everything Rex and I have tried of Westward, I've loved. And I've tried some other things on the side and single barrel picks, and I've always loved it. It's definitely very sort of uh, malty, rich, and grain forward. And my experience on the nose on this is no different. This is the cask strength Westward malt. Um, Miles Monroe is the blender that's making uh, these products. And, and uh, he said that he specifically created this to be cask strength, but approachable, which I appreciate because I end up drinking a lot of cask strength whiskeys and I find myself over and over just craving something that is just a little more easy, uh, which, you know, so I start drinking lower proof, but then I miss the richness of flavors that show up at, at 100 proof and higher where they, they can hold more compounds. This is new oak, by the way. Mmm. So a dense, rich, almost milk chocolate granola and berries, uh, like, like almost like, maybe it's because I'm just out of Thanksgiving. Maybe it's like a, almost like a chocolate cranberry granola. 
And then there's, but it's still kind of soft and approachable. It's definitely proof high. This is 125, but it's still like I can get right in there and it's not a struggle. I think Miles did a great job on this. The nose is really beautiful. If you live with it, it switches from chocolates and malts and grains and berries to like a lighter fruit and almost floral notes. But they're still like dense, heavy, heady floral, like oof, weighty. Mmm. There it is. Okay. Yes. So that palette is one of the most gentle palettes I have ever had for a whiskey that is this high proof. I, I mean, that's incredible. It's, it just went down so, the mouth experience was just so soft and oily, and it's just, and I can feel the heat, but it's lingering, but it's not fighting. It's honey and butter and oil and milk chocolate cream and, there's still a grain sort of, and I use the word grain forward, but I don't mean raw or young, or I just mean there's elements of the original grain and the malt still in this thing, and you can taste it. It tastes, uh, I think Emma always described it as a horse cookie, which I never have hung out with horses enough to remember what a horse cookie was, but she did, and it's effectively this mix of grain and things all held together with like a molasses binder and you feed it to horses. And it's, it feels very familiar when I tasted this, it's of those memories. And as you come back to it, the sort of fresh grass and grain notes start to sort of push to the top and now it actually is more floral, but like greenhouse floral. But it never gets rid of that low chocolate note. That's great. Okay, so if you like malty American tannin and then, you know, chocolate forward Northwest, this is gonna be home turf for you. You're gonna love this. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I wanted to say about that, which was Crowded Barrel started as this random small little idea. And then it became the world's first crowdsourced whiskey distillery with a massive community and a, a incredibly committed and kind and generous Patreon support and a channel uh, community that follows and a Facebook community that's actually a joy to hang out in or read in without constantly being uh, turning into small fights about random unimportant whiskey things. <laughs> and it was really the combination of bouncing off of other people's ideas and creativity that really made us find our way. And I think the most valuable thing that helped, I mean, the idea to start the secondary channel, that was Rex's idea, the Whiskey Tribe channel, um, to create one that was for profit that we could have control over and that we didn't have to worry about crossing any boundaries. Um, starting, turning the Crowded Barrel into an actual distillery um, was, was Rex and I talking. And then starting the Patreon was Rex's idea and developing it into a crowdsource thing. Um, and involving the community. We bounced off each other, but those all sort of originated with Rex talking about what if we did this, and what if we did this, and what is the potential here? And I think there is a lot of value in just moving and going and start of th starting things, and then pushing off of people's, other people's ideas and contrast and the push and pull of creativity that results in places you wouldn't really arrive on your own and uh, can take you down really magnificent and interesting paths. I would never have been able to blend whiskey or distill, and I would never have uh, been able to start independent bottling, and um, I wouldn't have been a part of the Texas whiskey community uh, the way that I loved, and I wouldn't have met all these astounding human beings that come to Crowded Barrel every single week, and, and all of that if I had just been left only to my own devices and just stayed with a little baby distillery that served the whiskey school. So I'm grateful for the direction that all of that took and the completely foreign land where we ended up. And I'm also grateful for where we're headed now. I think this was the right time and we're gonna do really cool and interesting things and they have their wings unclipped. Now they can take off and, and we can start developing and building over here. And all of this is only possible because of those choices we made and I'm really grateful for it. So, I'm really glad you're here. 
Cheers to you.